to another episode of Warhammer 40,000. It's 8th edition, 2,000 points. The Ultramarines continue their campaign uh, of doing well. A new force uh, will be moving in to take them on in this battle. It is the Tyranids with their brand new codex and a brand new list has been put together to take on the Ultramarines here fighting across this snow urban landscape. So ruins, ammunition, uh, dump just here, industrial buildings and then a downed Aquila just in the centre and uh, ruins and barricades all across the board so it will be across this battlefield that the Tyranids will seek the Ultramarines in battle. Right so welcome to this 2000 points game, Tyranids versus Ultramarines, just working on a new list at the moment, painting up some new units, so uh, experimenting here uh, with some Units that I haven't used for quite a while, uh, and some units I have been using already. Now the new edition of the Codex is here, uh, we're striving to make a list that works, but up against a tough opponent here, and a tough force led by Gilliman. So, uh, it's Battleforged, Battalion Detachment, and a Spearhead Detachment as well, uh, so that is seven command points in total. So three units of 16 Gene Stealers, uh, four in each are armed with Acid Moors, it's basically Power Swords there. Then one Hive Tyrant, he has a Strangle Fawn Cannon and Monstrous Lash Whip and Bone Sword for him. Then another HQ is a uh, Tyranid Prime, he's armed with Venom Cannon and rending claws for him. And in the third HQ, so I can take the spearhead detachment, uh, that is the uh, broodlord. He's armed with uh, the monstrous rending claws for him. And then I've invested in carnifexes here. They have improved with the new codex. Some different configurations for them. So there's three heavy supports here. You're, you're allowed to take up to three of them per choice. So almost maxed it out there. As uh, one unit of three here, unit of two unit of three and then they can split up and become independent uh, units once the game begins so the first unit here is regular carnifexes i've given them the tusk upgrade uh, for those heavy venom cannons and then monstrous siren talons they've got claws there crushing claws but i'm going to play them as monstrous siren talons in this game and i've paid for enhanced senses on those as well so they will be hitting on three plus when they shoot then uh, a brood of two here uh, those are uh, Thornbacks, and then I've given them uh, Monstrous Siren Talons as well, then Strangle Fawn Cannons and Enhanced Senses for them, and then the third brood is Screamer Killers, uh, two pairs of Monstrous Siren Talons, and Spore Cysts have been paid for as well, that means they'll be on minus one to hit them. So it'll be a real test here for the Carnifexes to see what kind of impact uh, they have. A lot of them have been equipped with shooting and close combat, so that's the idea for those, uh, is to be able to uh, fight and shoot at the same time. Heavy on Gene Stealers as well, and some pretty nasty HQs, but they're up against a very elite force here, and uh, James is well versed of his force, but this is a new list here for me to try and use effectively here for the tune. So we'll take a look now and see what the Ultramarines have. Right, so just to mention here, for this Tyranny of Force, the high fleet option I've gone for is the, the one you, it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> Joel, Mung, Joel Mung Da, well, I'll, I'll probably not say it again in this battle report, but it, it means that all the units count as always being in cover, unless they advance or charge. So it just helps them out a little bit uh, there with their armour saves and so on uh, as this force advances, just trying to offer as much protection to them as I can. Then uh, the more claws of fire axe here to the broodlord uh, it can be given to any of the characters. It's been given to him. If he slays anyone in combat, he'll then get to reroll uh, his attacks in combat from then on. So, uh, and then the, the warlord here is the hive tyrant. I've given him uh, insidious threat. So him and any units in three inches, when they attack, they'll ignore the benefits of cover. So that will help out the shooting. Uh, there for them to some degree as well, just to deny James uh, some benefits from cover, which is, there is a fair amount here uh, in uh, this game.
Right, so uh, 2,000 points of ultra range here. It's the list. Has it stayed the same, isn't it, pretty much? Exactly the same. Exactly the same, right. Okay, so we're running a bit of a theme here. Uh, James's Ultramarines, very, very good indeed. Very, very tough. New codex. And uh, James, now the proud owner of Gilliman here, nicely painted up. So we're trying to, trying to beat James here with different armies. Uh, so uh, it's an opportunity now for the Tyranids to try and make their mark. Dark Elder have tried and failed. <laughs> so, and then the orcs as well tried and failed now it's a chance for the tyranids to have a go i, I reckon they stand a, a better chance but i was optimistic of all of the armies before the game began so we'll reserve judgment till later on we'll let james run through here at his list Right, this is my 2,000 points of Ultramarines, and it's 2,000 points on the dot. And leading the force is the Primarch of the 13th for the Ultramarines. It is Robert Gilliman. His Warlord trait is Adapt to the Codex. I get uh, command points back after I spent them on a 5+. plus. That's his Warlord trait. And the two HQs for the Battalion Detachment our two tech marines. This tech marine here has got a full servo harness. Basically, he's got a flamer and a plasma pistol, or plasma cutter, and he's got a chainsaw as a close combat weapon. And the other tech marine, he's literally got a power axe and a servo harness. I have a company ancient. He has a relic, which is the banner of the Emperor Ascendant, which basically is any ultramarines instead of four pluses when. Uh, shooting when they die, it's, they come back on a free plus. They start shooting, or they can do a single close combat attack. And furthermore, it's minus one if you're in six inches for the enemy. And the ultramarines ignore uh, morale tests for in six as well, which is pretty handy. It's a pretty useful relic. I have two intercessor squads, squads number three and four. They've literally got bolt rifles. And I have, for the uh, battalion detachment, I have two Razorbacks with a Storm Bolter and Twin Laz Cannon, and a Razorback team, Sergeant equipped with a Bolt Gun and Chainsaw, and a Melter Gun, and the rest are equipped with Bolters, exactly the same combination for squad number four. And then we have the Hellblasters, which perform really well. I'm loving the Hellblasters. They're probably my favourite Primaris unit. Uh, very pleased with them. They are equipped with the Plasma Incinerators. And we have Sergeant Kronos. He is in a Predator Annihilator. And the Predator Annihilator has got uh, one twin Laz Cannon and Sponson Laz Cannons. And exactly the same for the two... Uh, heavy support choices as well. These are heavy support, these are heavy support which makes the spearhead and Predator Annihilators with twin Laz Cannons and Sponson Laz Cannons. So I've got a spearhead, battalion and Gilliman which makes it a total of 10 command points, regain them on 5 pluses. Updated FAQ which is 1.1 I believe and yeah on the, on the dot 2000 points Courage and honour. We march for the crag. Okay, so that's James's list. Two thousand points exactly. Nicely organised, and comes complete with a ultramarine battle cry as well. So yes. there it is. This is the challenge, everyone. That a number of armies have already faced and failed. Will the Tyrians prevail in this battle? We'll give it the best shot that we can. And well, there's some nasty stuff, but Gilliman is so rock hard. He has been wounded before. We've broken uh, that run uh, of not being wounded in any of the games. Uh, some Inkaby had the honour of causing the first wounds on Gilliman there. Uh, but that is about it so far. He hasn't been slain yet in battle. But it might be a first tier in this game. We'll see. We'll go on to scenario and deployment next. Right, so the scenario is Retrieval Mission. We're just uh, lining up the dice here for this one. It's Vanguard Strike as well. And James chose the deployment map and the corner that is in. Tyranids will be here. And then the Ultramarines will be around in this corner just here. Just showing you the view that both players will have. So Ultramarines will be uh, just here and amongst these industrial buildings. So Vanguard Strike... Uh, dice running up diagonally there, 
ultra-terrain deployment zone here, tunage just here, and then objectives, there's four of them. There's one just here in no man's land, one dead centre of the board, virtually dead centre, one up here inside this rune, and then one just here next to the industrial uh, building just there. Fascinating lineup here. A lot of objectives in no man's land, so both sides are going to have to try and come out and claim them. Tyranids no doubt will reach them first on the advance. James will try and repel the Tyranid assault and then in his classic style move out later on in the game and try and claim the objectives if he survives. That's, I'd imagine what's going to happen, but that is uh, the scenario. First Blood, Lion Breaker and Slay the Warlord all available in this game as well. All right, so um, all the objectives were three points each. And that's about it, right? So we're going to go and start deploying uh, units on the board here, alternating, putting them on the board one at a time. All right, so deployment done. Looks quite impressive for both sides here. Uh, Tyranids spreading out on quite a wide front here. Gene still is in the centre. Broodlord just here. Then units one, two, and three just there. The Tyranid Prime is just locked in there. Uh, and then uh, the Warlord here, the Hive Tyrant. And then uh, the shooty can't affect us with him uh, just there as well. So uh, the three of them with the heavy venom cannons and the strangle fawns just there. Uh, and then the screamer killers on the right hand side. Tyrion just finished deploying first. Then around here James has anchored a Razorback team on the right hand flank. Hellblasters just on top here with quite a commanding view across the board. Primaris Marines just here and here. Intercessor squads. And then uh, the Laser Cannon uh, Predators here. The Predator Annihilators, one, two, three of them. Kronos uh, just here. Uh, the Banner, Gilliman himself. Tech Marine here. Tech Marine just in the gap, just there. And then a Razorback team just there. So it's a bit more cramped here. Uh, James having to park up in this gap. But that's the view that they have of the Tyranids preparing to advance. It's lining up nicely here for a classic showdown as Gilliman stares across. Uh, the snowy landscape here and sees a Tyranid horde preparing to advance upon their position. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, psychic powers, by the way, uh, for there's two psychic powers here Catalyst and Psychic Scream, and then Catalyst as well for the Broodlord just down here, just to make things straightforward there for the Tyranids. I reckon that's it. There's a lot of new stratagems and Warlord traits and. Uh, Hive fleet rules and so on to remember. Uh, we'll do the best we can in this game, right? So, no command point. No command point. It's a straight roll off. Plus one. We're on plus one. Four becomes five. James gets a six. He will go first. He rolls a one. No doubt he'll try and seize. Yeah, I'm not just here. <laughs> this is the tense bit. Six plus. Nope. No. I'll spend a strategy. I'm sure you will. Well, I'll regain the strategy. <laughs> I do. Oh, you rolled a six. <laughs> so All you need is six. Go. One in six chance. Come on, oh, Tyrannus, please. So it's well worth trying to seize the initiative. All right. Yeah, you got it for free. Come on. Oh! Oh, 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 it was on a six. It was on a six and it rolled over in the snow onto a five. Tyranids will go first. There's nothing James can do now to stop it. All the dice rolls have finished. Ah, oh, the Tyranids get to go first. It's very tense now starting games of 40k because you've got the roll off, you've got season initiative, then a chance to re-roll the season initiative. So uh, that, that is some tense dice rolling before the game even begins. But we can breathe a sigh of relief here. Uh, the Tyranids will get to go first and that gives them uh, a, a, a more of a chance here uh, they'll get to shoot and advance first we'll go on to the first turn of the game Tyranids will make the initial surge ahead
All right, so we're on the first turn here, just pondering here before the Tyrians begin their move. Massive advantage for them uh, to go first here. That gives them a chance here uh, to try and make an impact early on. So the key, as we've learned in previous games, is to destroy one of the Predators. Sounds straightforward enough. Do the Tyrians have enough firepower to do it? They, there's heavy Venom cannons in there. Strangleform cannons are pretty good as well. So there is firepower available. Will it be enough will be the big test. Uh, we'll make a move here. It's an, a shooty army, aggressive army, and they'll need to work together as a team here if they're to stand any chance of taking on the Ultramarines and winning in this game. It's not about the winning, though. It's all about the taking part, isn't it? No, it's all about winning. <laughs> no, no, it's all about winning. <laughs> that is, uh, we're enjoying this one here. Tyranids in the snow fighting against Ultramarines is classic. Uh, here it's a nice landscape to do battle. We'll make the initial moves here uh, with this Tyranid force. Okay, so movement complete here for the Tyranids. They're, they were on a wide front, but they've converged here and are clustering together, just trying to get the enhancements uh, as much as possible. So uh, the Hive Tyrant here, and then around him is the, the Shooty Carnifexes, and, and the uh, Tyranny Prime, so they're all clustered together there. And then various advanced moves made, just an inch there, so nine inches in total bursting out of the ruin just there. A six rolled for them, so 14 inches, they are actually within charge range just there. And then uh, here this unit's advanced five. Broodlord advanced uh, nice and quickly as well, good roll from him, so he's made it just there. And then the Screamer Killers advanced well, one rolling six, five. Uh, and uh, a pretty high score there as well, I think it was a four. So they've advanced up nice and quick, uh, seven inches plus their advance roll. The only ones that haven't advanced is the, the shooter units, so they will receive the benefit of cover uh, if James decides to fire at any of those. So that is movement phase done. We'll go on to psychic phase next for the Tyranids on turn one. All right, so uh, psychic phase complete. Uh, Catalyst was cast from the Broodlord, onto the hive tyrant so five plus he'll ignore wounds that come through and then uh, that's about it because it's only one psychic power per turn from him he was in range to do smite but we chose catalyst instead and then uh, out of range of psychic stream and uh, smite with the hive tyrant so that is it psychic phase done on to shooting phase next Right, so we start the shooting phase off here. I'm in range with Bioplasmic Scream here from the Screamer Killers, 18 inches. They're just in range of the Marines, that first one. Yep. Okay, just about in range. So it's D6 shots. We'll just do the first one. It's not a whole unit. Six shots, a good start. We did advance, so it will be minus one to hit. So it'll be fives to hit with these uh, shooting attacks that come through. So uh, fives and sixes. We get some hits here. Threes to wound, they've all wounded, and James uh, is in cover, so he'll get six plus saves here uh, to try and block these from going through. Which he rolls two sixes, <laughs> very good. Good start there James, so he's saved one, so wound has been taken. Okay, it's so just one wound taken, uh, the next one will fire at the same unit, D6 shots. Six again, <laughs> fives and sixes. Wow. Threes to wound. So, uh, three more saves of six plus. Trying to hit these Primaris Marines here. Failed those, so that's two Primaris Marines gone. Removed from play. It's not a bad start here from the Carnifexes. Trying to get some shooting off before they're blown away uh, by, <laughs> by James's uh, models here. Okay, so they've taken two casualties. Uh, the last one will fire at uh, the unit. Just check to see if we're in range over here. Uh, against this unit just ahead. We may well be in range. Uh, yeah, no, it's just in range. James has checked. So D6 shots. We've rolled another six. No, it's three shots this time. Uh, fives. Just the one. Three's for a wound. And it has wounded. So a six up save. Or there'll be a wound come through. No, okay. So wound taken. Not bad from the, not bad from the Screamer Killers. Firing uh, at speed as they've advanced, but they brought down two of the Primaris Marines and wounded another. So not a bad start here. Uh, there's no shooting at all from any of this lot, so it's on to this shooting cluster here, uh, preparing to fire. So we'll start with the Heavy Venom Cannons. Their mission straightforward is to take out one of those Predators. I think we're going to aim at Kronos. James will point him out uh, just there. We'll check our ranges here. It's range 36. Need to make sure all three of them are in range. 
Oh yeah, look, they're miles in. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's the range is no problem. So let's make a start with the first one. D3 shots. Get two shots. We're at freeze to hit. We do get our two hits. Stratagem on standby here. Uh, we're on threes to wound. We failed. Um, we're going to use a stratagem. And we've passed it. So uh, that's two wounds have come through. Yeah, so two saves of five plus here. Uh, wow. Valdiv both. You get, wow, good start here from the heavy venom cannons. This is why I chose them. So at the next one we'll fire at the same target. Three plus. Oh, I'm so glad we took enhanced senses. Two threes. Oh, uh, strength nine. Two wounds come through. Two saves of five plus. If James fails these, Kronos will die. He does foul both. I'm not going to spend a strategy, so it's first bluff. Oh, Kronos is gone. That was pretty quick. Roll dice six plus to see if he detonates. It'd be awful if he does. <laughs> That's okay. Roll dice. He gets on the roll of one. Okay, so he's going to work out what happens to Kronos now. He's, right. he's okay, right? So he disembarks. But we've broken the formation here. This is the crucial point. Uh, that James will not be able to use that stretch and enhances the predators there. That's a that is a really good start here for the Tyrians. They've caused trouble for the Ultramarines, bringing down some Primaris Marines, and then one of the predators one of the predators has gone here. Uh, it can't affect firepower pretty effective. Okay, so still with uh, plenty of firepower left, we're going to fire the third and final heavy venom cannon at the predator just behind the one in front. So D3 shots here. If we can take out the second one, it'd be incredible. So two shots, three plus. Just the one comes through. Freeze to wound. Does wound. So five up save, or there'll be free damage here. James not liking the damage effects here coming through. So uh, he's passed that one. Uh, he did roll a five, so well done. Now, they, it's not its not a bad weapon, is it? No, they have improved. It's about time, yeah, they have improved. Yeah, and the Enhanced Sense is helping out. And then sort of ignoring the cover here, uh, helpful as well. Okay, so we're, we've now got Strangle Fawn Cannons. There's one, two, three of them. There's a Venom Cannon as well. We'll fire that at the same target. That's D3 shots. Two shots. That is Freeze to hit as well. The try of the uh, Tyranny Prime. Uh, it is strength eight, so it's still freeze to wound. Failed. So now we're on uh, strangle form cannons. Now, targets. We could go for Primaris Marines with these, uh, or we could fire at the Predator. <sighs> mm, not sure what to go for. So I think we'll fire the strangle form cannons at the Primaris Marines just up there, the Hellblasters, try and eliminate as many of them as we can. We'll see what we can do, uh, we'll check some ranges with these. So we'll fire this one, they are all within range, so D6 shots, ouch, just the one. Uh, does get a hit though, and there's no wound, strength 7, so that's one gone. Uh, we'll fire the other, three shots with this one, it's quite unreliable amount of firepower. Uh, freeze to hit, they all hit. Uh, freeze to wound at strength 7. Two wounds come through. It's AP minus 1. Here's so the two saves of uh, ignoring cover. So two saves of 4 plus. So uh, two saves of 4 plus. Just fouled both. And they're two damage a time. So that will be two of the Hell Blasters brought down. He's going to use a stratagem here. So 5 plus to regain it. No. Nope. Okay. And then uh, 4 plus to save. Oh, okay, well done. So, just one of the Hell Blasters gone. Oh, right, okay, yes, 3 plus. The, the banner. banner, yeah, well threat. placed, yeah. Nope. No, okay. So, uh, Hive Tyrant now, he'll fire his. D6 shots with him, the commander, 3 shots. 3s, they all hit. Uh, freeze to wound. 2 wounds, 2 saves of 4 plus. If any of these fail, it will be... Uh, more Hell Blasters being taken away. Another one's fouled, alright, so another one. He gets to shoot back. Yes, okay, yeah, with the Bennett. Yes. He does. Um, 30 inch range, one shot. He may as well supercharge. I'm going to supercharge. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, 30 inches, Iron Ranger. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're okay. <laughs> so three plus here. He's going to try and hit one of these kind of X's here. Rolls one. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> James gets his re rolls. Four's a hit. Strength eight, AP minus four. Toughness seven. Two damage. So nice. Yep. Yeah. Wounded. Does wound, okay. Yeah, so I do get a save here. It's minus four, but we have the benefit of being in cover. So actually, if I get a six here, we'll prevent the damage from coming through. No, we're all at once. Two wounds have been taken on uh, it's this kind of X here. All right, so that shooting phase finished there. Not too bad for the Tunids. Uh, this has been pretty good, but James still has 15 LAS cannons on the board. Uh, there and three of the hell blasters remain alive so it's still got a horrendous amount of firepower as we've seen uh, in the other games that have been played but Tyrions have made a good strike here initially done better than the other armies I think it's been a good hit from oh, yeah. yeah no pretty good from them now it's, now it's a case of survival can they survive the return firepower from uh, James now the, the, the Tyrions are getting closer a lot of these units next turn we poised to strike in close combat. That could cause trouble for the old trains. See what James decides to do. Uh, he's running out of table space here if the Tyrians press on with their advance. So some key choices for shooting coming up. We'll check to see if we're able to charge with any of these units first of all. All right. So James just doing Overwatch. He's rerolling his shots. He does get three hits, three sixes. This is against the Gene City unit. They are in, they, they'll need a 10 to reach in combat, would you believe? Uh, they will be able to hit the Primaris Marines here if we roll high enough. It's a difficult roll. Three rolling to wound. Two wounds. Two wounds. Two saves of five plus. Failed. And there's nothing else we can do to stop that. So two Gene Stealers are gone. Okay, so... A 10. Now what you can do is use a command point. You can use a command point to reroll. Reroll that one. Yeah, I think I will. It's half a chance of us getting in. <laughs> so four plus. Oh, we rolled a four. Surging ahead, they will make it into combat. So not too bad there from the Genius Steelers. That is speed from them. They can move, advance, and then charge. And then they've rolled a 10 here and have made it into contact with uh, the Primaris Marines. So we'll make some moves here with this, the lead unit of Gene Steelers. Lightning fast advance from them. Right, so charge moves done. We've got piling moves to do in just a moment. We did check, double check the range there. It was 9 inches, so we didn't use the command point in the end to make it into combat. Uh, so what we'll do now uh, is we'll get to go first. We'll make a piling move next. All right, so piling move done. Uh, they'll, they'll all get to fight there. They're all either within an inch of an enemy model or within an inch of one of my models within an inch. But it all works out. They're all in. So it'll be uh, 16 attacks coming in. So I'll resolve this here. Chance to bring down some Primaris Marines here. Initial break-in taking place. All going very well for the Tyrians at the moment. So we'll do Acid more attacks here. Uh, this is four of the models. Four attacks each because we've got over 10 uh, Gene Stealers here. So... Threes to hit. They're basically power swords, so we're on fours to wound. Terrible roll. Really, really bad. Uh, four saves here uh, of six plus. Okay, so three wounds in total come through. So James has lost two models here. I guess one of them already had a wound. He's just rolling up to see if they get to fight back immediately because of the banner. One does. One does, okay. So so is it one attack or two? One attack. Right. Okay. Freeze to hit. Re rolling to hit because of Gulliman. <laughs> okay. No. no. Okay. It's two of them gone. Uh, rending, rending claws attacks next. That will be uh, 12 models fighting with them. Okay. So, bit of a jaw dropping moment here. Uh, 12 genius sealers is 48 attacks. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, freeze to hit. There. <laughs> <laughs> They're a nasty enough unit here. So I've got 24 attacks here. We'll do these first. So freeze to hit. Yeah, kind of a... Back to rolling lots of ones and twos here. But a fair amount come through, but that's a lot of misses. So uh, sixes are good. There's one. That's an auto wound coming through. Uh, and then James needs to make some saves here. Uh, free saves. Uh, so it's minus one on the AP uh, for regular rending claws. It's fouled two, so uh, three plus he gets to fight immediately. Of yes, the... right. So he's lost another one, and then one's taken a wound. Yeah, does get to fight back. James, let James resolve this. Threes to hit, hits. Threes to wound. So fours to wound. wound. Rerolls to wound. Wow. No. No. Okay. 
Okay, so the other half here, the other 24, in freeze. This is a bit more normal, I think. Yep, so pretty good. And then uh, sixes are good. Got them. No, they're dead. The last two. So sergeant, yeah, and the sergeant and the last uh, intercessor there are gone. So, uh, yes, so two dice now. Oh, separate because they're not... Oh, it's, no, no, it's one attack each, no, isn't it? No, it's separate because they're sergeant. Doesn't matter, it's one attack each anyway, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, so just roll both, that's fine. Uh, they both fight back. So it's fours. Freeze. So freeze. Freeze to hit, yeah. Reroll. Re -roll. Hit. What's the wound? The banner's amazing, really. But no wounds coming through, but re-rolls. One wound. One wound, okay, so five up, save. Passed. Not a single kill, so wipe out here. We'll do a... Consolidation move after this could be crucial here. The gene stealers might be able to reach the predator. Yeah, so uh, consolidation move done. We've easily made it to within an inch of the predator here. So that will silence that heavy firepower as well for the ultra range. So it's gone. F it's started out well for the tunage. They've made that initial strike with their shooting and then uh, they've made a, a, an impact here. Uh, in, uh, James is going to, yes, James just remembering to fight in close combat. And okay, oh yes, re rolling sixes does get a wound. We need to make a save here to see if one of these gene stealers dies. It does just take one from the, from the backs. One of them has been run over in revenge, uh, but the rest will remain just there. So, a bit of a pickle here now for James to try and deal with. Right. He's under threat, there's morale to resolve. All right, so that's that resolve then. Uh, James attacking back there with the Predator. So turn one finished here for the Tyranids. They have made uh, a great impact. And it just shows the difference that these codexes are making here. It's brought the Tyranids up. I mean, a number of the things that have taken place in this game, like the heavy firepower, for example, uh, has all been because of the codex and the new rules and stratagems and so on. So uh, that has helped the Tyranids out here. And they've made a pretty good strike here, taking out Kronos. Uh, damaging Primaris Marine units, damaging the Hell Blasters, and then here wiping out Primaris Marine unit, and then bursting in uh, to the defensive position here. So it's gone well for the Tyranids. Ultrans will need to strike back here. Uh, I still still think James is tough. He's got Gilliman just there. Uh, what a unit to rely upon in a time of crisis like this. But see what the Ultrans can do. They're going to have to strike back next against the Tyranids. There, turn one coming up next.
All right, so turn one here for the old train. So much has happened already uh, on this early turn. As we've seen in the previous battles, the first two turns are really the, de the deciding turns of the game. So uh, it's been right for the two and just to focus and concentrate here to try and make an impact straight away. They have done that. Now it's a chance the old trains to try and readdress the balance of this game. So James pulling out of combat. I thought he would do that. What will he do with Gilliman? He could charge him in against Gene Steelers. Not the best of targets for him. They do have invun saves. They're only one wound at a time. There's a lot of models there to try and absorb damage. Gilliman's never done that before. <laughs> He's never pulled back. He's never pulled back. Oh, look at his... He's, is he hiding? <laughs> no comment here from James. Constant, no, I'm not going to interrupt him here. We'll let him concentrate what he's doing here. I'm sure it's tactical. Remember all the buffs and benefits that Gilliman uh, can grant to other units. So it's worth keeping him alive and keeping him in within range of the defensive units there to regrant the hits and the wounds as well. So he's waiting. Doesn't want to use Gilliman early here and protect him as best as he can right so pull him back yes he's, James is talking about flamers here mm -hmm. on the tech priests right nice two of them yeah that's yeah okay that's a good way of bringing down geniuses yeah so this immediate threat needs to be removed and then James can concentrate on the others that are further away it's some distance look at the distance now this unit that surged ahead has reached to there because of that charge it's miles away from the rest of the tyranny force. James pulling right back here to try and focus in and deal with these. All right, so uh, the movement complete here. Uh, Hell blasters remaining where they are. Primaris Marines moving just to here and then pulling back out of trouble uh, with one of the predators. The other one's not moved. No, not moved at all. Okay, and neither is this one. No. no. Okay, and then uh, the Razorback's not moved either. So James is just trying to uh, line up and grant the most efficient firepower as he can uh, to target different units. It'll be interesting to see what he decides to go for. Infantry and smaller range weapons, uh, no doubt, will go after these. And then the Laz Cannons will try and bring down uh, the larger Tyranid Monstrous Creatures. We'll go on to shooting phase next. The Ultrains on turn one. All right, so uh, James is going to supercharge up his Hellblasters. So there's three of them, and he's going to try and go after the wounded Carnifex, the one that's just there. He's just checking his range. Yep. Oh, leave that model there. That's fine. <laughs> no, I'll push it back to where it was. Yep. Just there. Okay. So he is within range. Three shots then. Rerolls to hit, rerolls to wound. Yep. And it's strength fate as well. So Supercharging. That means you... I have to do two at a time. Uh, one at a time. It doesn't matter, actually. No. Nope. Um, yes, because it's just one shot each. That's maybe right. Maybe it's the sergeant, so I may have to do. No, you need to do the sergeant separately here. James will just roll for him first. Hits. He's fine. Then just roll the other two, may as well. Hits. Cool. Okay, good. And then you're on freeze to wound, re rolls. He's going to do it. <laughs> no, alright, so. But that's two wounds a time, isn't it? So that's going to be f four, four, damage. four damage. But I get some saves here. Six plus. None. All right, so four wounds taken. Ouch. So Carnifex left with just two wounds remaining. Great thing about these is their damage bracket. They don't have one because they only have eight wounds. So they'll still be firing uh, and attacking at full capacity, even with just two wounds remaining. James will decide what to fire with next here. All right, so he's going to fire the Predator that didn't move. Is it within range? Yeah, in six. In six of Gilliman. Okay. So he's going to go two less cannons into this one. One last cannon to there, one last cannon to there. So, okay, so the first last cannon, take out, see if you can take out the wounded kind of effects here. So, three plus. Freeze to wound. Re no, rerolls to wound. Yes. Oh, it was on a two. Okay, so he's got his wound. So we do get a five plus save here. It's minus three. Uh, we have a three plus save, and then we count as being a cover up. So, five plus. Four. Failed. Um, well, it's mighty tempting to roll to a. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll use a command point here. We've rolled a six. <laughs> we've kept it alive. That was well worth the command point just there. So we've kept him alive. We've, we've used up our reroll this turn, but it was well worth. We've kept him alive. This one here, then two shots against him. Uh, threes. Rerolls for Gilliman. Oh, okay, and then freeze to wound. Yes, 
Five up save. Six. Oh, about time we had some good dice rolls. Okay, uh, so zero damage there. Then a less can against the end Carnivex. Hits. Hits. And wounds. Okay, so five plus. Oh. Yes, nothing we can do. It's D6 damage. There's nothing we can do to stop this now. Six. He has rolled a six. God, there's some cracking dice rolls coming out here. So just two wounds left on him. Right, so twin laser cannon on the razor back there at the back is going after this one. Yep. Okay, so uh, two shots. Then he, it's twins. It, that, that's one of the limitations. It does have to fire at the same target. He's within six. He's six of Gilliman. Well done. It's good positioning there. You can see why Gilliman fell back there to grant all of those units that benefit. Yep, both hit. Freeze to wound. Both, both have wounded. Uh, it's going to die here. I need to roll some dice. Yeah. Which you do. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> it's really it's incredible. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. I am starting to like this bubble here. With the granting of being in cover, some venom ropes would be nice to give minus one to turn all of James' units into guard tanks. <laughs> And then uh, maybe add in a Tyrannifex, an Exocrine, there's some nice nasties that could be added into this. Now, now you'd think this is a shooting bubble, but it, it's equipped for combat as well. It's like a mobile uh, firing uh, group here that's able to fight in combat as well. It's interesting here. Uh, some new developments taking place here for the Tyranids. James just firing his Stormbolt here. He's firing at the Gene Stillers. Getting rerolls for everything here. Uh, Force to wind. Reroll that one. Just the two. And five plus. Just the one. Okay, so one from the back can disappear. Right, so uh, twin laser cannon from this razor back into this one. Going to try and finish him off. I missed. Missed. Perfect. And no rerolls. <gasps> Whoa. All right, so uh, James is going to use a stratagem here to reroll to hit. So one dice to three plus. Uh, so he's missed there. Uh, five plus to regain the stratagem. It's a four. Okay, no, so come on, point gone. So, sensing the Tyranids are doing well here. Now, what adds to the pressure for the Ultramarines? No, no, no. So what the pressure, the, the ultimate pressure for you is the fact that Gilliman's on the table. And he's a, he's a, taste, he's a tasty morsel here. <laughs> the Tyranids would love to devour. <laughs> So a lot of pride at stake here. The whole chapter's watching, James. <laughs> you, you take a Primark, he does enhance the army and, do, and, and does well, but oh, the shame if he's... <gasps> and the rule applies. Remember what I said? No. Yes. If I kill him, I keep the head. I will. So, yeah, no, we'll keep the head <laughs> just to add even more pressure. If James loses the fight here, if, if, if Gilliman's killed, I will remove his head uh, and keep it until James you know what? wins I don't it back. Care about <laughs> I just want to kill stuff. He wants to kill stuff. <laughs> All right, so don't, now, don't be reckless, James. Keep your head, <laughs> keep it cool. It's a lot of, yeah, you're not really seeing it here in the video, but a lot of pausing taking place here. It's a headache, this game for the Ultrains. The Tyranids are put. Uh, James in a, a sticky situation to say the least. He's trying to figure out how best to deal with this. Still got this threat here to deal with, but plenty of small arms fire. Well, I'd say plenty of small arms fire, not too much left here. Right, so we've resolved the rest of the shooting here. It was all directed towards the gene stealers, and you can see they've been reduced down. Ten of them have been slain here in total after James's shooting has been resolved. That was Flamers firing through a bolter here. Uh, we resolved Storm Bolter fire coming through from this Razorback. Uh, frag grenade thrown by Kronos. Yep, the, these guys fired down there as well. Yeah, they fired the uh, they, yes, that's right, they fired across at the Carnifex here but did no damage at all. And that was about it, so in the end, 10 Gene Sealers gone. Uh, so there is still a bit more to do actually. James has forgotten to fire Gilliman, <laughs> so he can fire. But James just checking ranges for other targets. No, alright, so he's going to fire here at the Gene Sealers. Twos. Rerolls. So the game must take twice as long with everything being rerolled all the time. <laughs> Strength six, yes. So force to wound, uh, freeze to wound. They've all wounded. I've got a full house here from Gilliman. Right, fives. Wow, not bad. Three of them. Okay, so three more gone. One, 
two and we'll say three here. Just these two left, they're acid mores. Uh, there I've kept those models alive, always leaving them last, uh, but 13 wounds taken, or casualties taken in total. All right, so that marks the end of shooting, and there's no assaults, James says, so nothing at all. That'll mark the end of the turn. Just got morale to resolve now uh, for this unit here. Okay, so two command points. I've just expended those to keep them two alive. They could be helpful. And not too much impact they can make, but they could be used to silence one of these tanks here uh, in close combat there and keep it quiet. So that will be the end of the first turn. The Ultramarines have struck back. They, they should have done better here. All the Carnifexes remain, so at least get another round of shooting with them. A chance to advance some further ahead as well. And the Genius Steelers is virtually destroyed them, but there is two of them defiantly remaining alive. So two units have come off lighter here uh, on this first turn exchange. So we'll go on to the second turn for them now. If they strike well again... They'll keep themselves in this fight. It's quite rare we see the Tyrians do well uh, against such powerful armies. So we'll keep the ball rolling here uh, as the Tyrians continue their advance. Okay, so we've done for the Tyrians here, uh, advancing straight towards uh, this point here on the board. So the two geniuses have moved off there, ready to charge at uh, whatever targets uh, are available after shooting phase is finished. These rolled a 2 for their advance, I re-rolled it on a command point and then rolled a 6, so they've gone 14 inches, nice and quick with them. These moved up uh, to 10 inches with them. We've moved 7 here and not advanced, their firepower will be more accurate. Uh, Brood Lord has moved up, advancing 10, and these have all moved 7, uh, and then 8 there with the Hive Tyrant, that bubble sticking close together. And that's quite straightforward there, that's all the movement done. Uh, for the two units, we'll go on to their Psychic Phase next. Right, so Psychic Phase complete. Uh, Catalyst was cast here on these Gene Stealers, so 5 plus they'll ignore wounds that come through. And then uh, Psychic Scream we tried to use from the Broodlord against the Primaris Marines just on top and failed. So that's Psychic Phase complete. On to shooting next. Alright, so uh, we're going to start with the Heavy Venom Cannons and they will fire at the Predator that's not Pop Smoke. This one's Pop Smoke by the way, so we're going to fire at that one. Now, just a scary moment there. We checked the weapons, uh, just discussing the rules to make sure that they're uh, not heavy, otherwise it's minus one to hit, but they're not. They're assault weapons, even the heavy Venom Cannons. Uh, even though it's heavy by their title, they are assault. Upgrades. Yeah, so it makes them three plus to hit. really helps them out uh, a little more. They're only about 120-odd points for that unit, equipped for combat and for shooting, so not bad. Okay. They should have died, that's right. Okay, so we'll fire... Uh, but they're alive, that's the, that's the crucial point. Okay, so we'll fire this one here, go after this Predator, so uh, D3 shots. Two shots. Freeze to hit. We do get our two hits here again, these enhanced senses really helping out. Uh, freeze to wound. Oh boy. Yeah, why not? We'll use a command point here. Doesn't pay off, it's just one command point remaining for us. Uh, but there's one save for James to make of 5+. plus. So, uh, a 5 plus save here, it'll be free damage. Save. Oh, he's pulling out saves here. This is getting a little bit scary here. The next one. Oh, no. Three shots. Freeze to hit. They all hit. Freeze to wound. Yeah, two. Two saves of 5 plus. Nope. No. Six damage. Six damage, unless he wants to use a <laughs> command point. No. I He's not going to. Alright, so he's going to absorb six damage on the Predator. Uh, D3 shots with the last one. Two shots coming through now. They both hit. This is good firepower coming through. They both wound. Two saves of five plus. There will be trouble here if James fouls these. He's past one. And he's going to absorb the damage. So how many have you got? Venom of course, cannons? nine. That's all the venom cannons used up. So there's no venom cannons left to fire, and um, they have caused nine wounds. James thinking about whether to use up a stratagem to go for a reroll on a five plus. Okay, she's going to take the damage. So nine wounds taken. Oh no! Second thoughts here. Hang on a moment. Right now he's going to accept the damage here. So nine wounds off of your. What did you, what did you have? Eleven. I have eleven. So you got two left. Yeah. Oh, Predator's on the verge of destruction here. It's hard because I don't want it to explode. And... Yeah, difficult, difficult. Yes. Okay. So we'll just hold it there. We're going to fire this Carnifex. It's within 18 inches. It's going to try and take on these Primus Marines. They can see. We've checked line of sight. Uh, so D6 shots. Four shots. We need fours. 
two hits. And then freeze to wound, yes. It's minus four. Uh, James does have the benefit of cover, so he will get two saves of six plus. No, so one of the primary marines is removed. I'll fire the next kind of effects here. He will be in range. And it's five shots. Need fours. Need threes. Yep, two more. Two more saves uh, of six plus. Save one. Save one. All right, so just a wound comes through. The other one, we've checked the range. It can see and can hit the predator here. Uh, James, just double checking. Yeah. Mm, yes, all right, okay. So D6 shots. Four shots. Fours to hit. Do you get two hits? Fours to wound. One wound does come through. And James does get the benefit of cover. He's obscured there. So a six plus. Yes. Oh, he's rolled it. <laughs> well done. Right, so the Tyranid Prime's going to fire now. D3 shots with the Venom Cannon going after the Predator. Two shots in freeze. Do you get the two hits? Freeze to wound. Two wounds come through. It's minus one. Oh no, hang on, it could be minus two. We'll just check here. Yes, yeah, it's just minus two there. So two saves of five plus. No, it's dead. Yeah, it's going to It's 2d3, isn't it? We would have got three wounds, yeah, so it's gone. So d6 here. I'm semi hoping you don't explode because I can use my. Uh, no. no, okay, so they've not. It's not exploded. Okay, so but that's a predator gone. Good result there for the tune. It's still got multiple strangle fawn cannons to fire here. Okay, so the Hive Tyrant's going to fire his Strangle Fawn Cannon. I'm going to go after these up here. So D6 shots. Three shots. In freeze. And freeze to wound. Yes, the wound comes through. It's minus one on the save. He's rolled a one. No. Spend a stratagem. Alright, he's going to use a stratagem here. So a uh, four plus save? Yeah. Save. Passed. Uh, five plus three gain your stratagem. Yes. Oh, the string, string of sixes here, well done. Okay, so we've got two strangle form cannons left. Okay, so we'll find the next strangle form cannon at these. We're going to try and damage them. So D6 shots, five shots, threes to hit, then threes to wound. Oh, it's a shame. One save here, a four plus. No rerolls available. If he fouls this, he'll, it's damage two. So uh, save a four plus. No. There's a two, alright, so one of them gone. It's three plus he gets to shoot. Oh. It doesn't, and no reroll available. Oh boy, okay, so one of them uh, brought down. Yeah, so we'll, we'll fire the other strangle form cannon uh, across here, try and remove another one of these from play. So, three shots. Threes. Threes. Two. Two saves of four plus. And no rerolls available, but a bit of pressure here. James has passed one and fouled the other. So three plus to use him uh, to shoot with. Yes. And it's a four, yep. Yeah. Okay, so you Double can shoot. Tapping. Yep. I'm gonna target. He might be able to pick up one of the carnifexes here. Yeah. He's gonna go after that carnifex. I thought he might. The banner's excellent. It's so so such a good uh, unit good to relic. take. It's pretty good. Okay. So threes to hit. Yep, yeah, one shot, threes to hit. Rerolls. Missed. Oh yes, because of Gilliman. Yep. If I roll one again, he's slain. But he's going to die anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come on, him. Three plus. Uh, yeah, three plus. Does get a hit. Freeze to wound. Rerolls as well. <gasps> six. Six is a wound. Okay. Um, six plus. Otherwise, this kind of fix will die. Failed. And there's yeah. nothing I can do yet. Two damage is gone. So well done, James. You've killed. There's Death Row's roll to roll up here. Actually, it's a big creature. No, all right, so nothing happens there. No, just check there, death, there is no death rows uh, here. It's not enough wounds, not a big enough creature, so that kind of X is gone. So a bit of retribution there from James on the Tyranids at turn. So uh, shooting complete here, not too bad from the Tyranids. Uh, they've reduced this squad down quite significantly, just one Hellblast left. And then uh, another Predator gone here, just one Predator remains, which could be silenced here if we charge in here successfully with these two geniuses. So we'll go on to Assaults and Overwatch next for the Tyranids on their second turn. 
You're right, so charges have gone ahead. The two geniuses tried to charge the Predator here, and they were slain. James got three Laz Cannon hits and three wounds, and we found our Invon saves. They're gone. But this unit here rolled up a seven, which was just enough uh, to reach Kronos in close combat. So we'll make uh, some piling moves next to this unit here and prepare to fight. All right, so at uh, twist of events here, the two tech marines have held themselves in. They both heroically intervened. The way we're reading the rules here, uh, there is a bit of debate about this one, but we reckon uh, we can only fight against units that we the that were the target of the charge, but the target of the charge, which those two tech marines weren't. So James will get to fight with them, and we'll not be able to strike him back. So all of our attacks must go uh, against Kronos. Something else to cover here as well. Pilot moves have been made as long as we've ended closer to. Kronos at the time, which moved us in, we tucked around, and that's put us within an inch of the Predator, so we silenced that vehicle as well. James is within an inch, he'll get to fight the Predator as well. It's a bit of a mess here uh, as this Gene City unit has piled in, but disrupting the Ultramarines here, uh, get them in watching all of this take place just from there. But we're all up here and get these combats resolved. So we'll do Acid More attacks here, then freeze. They virtually all hit, there's two have failed. Uh, Force to wound. That's an incredible dice roll. So uh, James will need to make eight saves here uh, at minus three. So just going to roll up some saves. Oh, he's long gone. Long gone. So wipe out there. Kronos is gone. Hacked down there by the Acid Moors. There's no other attacks that we can do. Bit of overkill there. The Rending Claws uh, can't be used. Can't even use them. Uh, against the Tech Marines just there. So I'll let James fight back with those two and that'll be the combat's done. So he's going to roll two dice here. It's uh, the Servo Harness, is it called? Yeah, it's Servo Harness. So I only do one attack with these. One attack, but he's got two. So he's going to double it up to two attacks. May as well just do it simultaneously. So re rolls because of, of Gilliman. Okay. Pause, minus one. Mm -hmm. so one, hit. one hit, two's to wound. Yep, two's to wound. Does wound. All right, so five plus invent, which we found. Uh, then fives is free damage, so I, I think we're going to lose. Uh, five plus is here with catalyst. This is the damage coming through. Almost blocked that uh, there, but have failed to keep that gene still alive. So uh, one of those can be removed. So then uh, attacks here. It's actually a power axe on here, so we'll do that one separate. So two attacks for him. And re rolling for Gilliman. Freeze to wound. And re rolling. Wind comes through. Okay, so five plus in one save, and five plus. Uh, it's two, it's two damage actually, isn't it, with the axe? I think, uh, but we've fouled anyway. One, one. one damage. All right, doesn't matter. He's gone. So across here is a chain sword on this one. So he will get three attacks. Raise, re rolls, and force to wind. Re rolls. Sorry about the angle. <laughs> and yeah, re rolls. So it's two. Five pluses. Oh, close. And uh, no, okay, so two more gone. So Gene still is taking some casualties. It's cost them to charge into there. Uh, but they've killed Kronos and they've silenced this tank here, but uh, they have taken damage in return. Okay, so uh, we've just, James has just fought back with the Predator here, and that's killed another one of the Genius Steelers, so five casualties taken. We've rolled up morale as well, uh, well there wasn't any need to, uh, we are just within 12 inches of the Broodlord just there, so auto pass on morale for them. Uh, so helping those Genius Steelers out, they've remained in combat, have also piled them in, just swinging them around here and here, and then getting a bit closer to the Predator. That marks the end of the second turn for the Tyranids, they're doing well. But they are taking damage. We've lost one unit of Genius Steelers. Another unit's taken uh, some damage. There's a fresh unit here. And then uh, one of the Carnifexes is gone. And some others. Uh, this one especially uh, very badly wounded as well. So if James, again, if he has a good turn with some firepower and takes out a couple of these, then the Tyranids will be in trouble. But they're still doing well here. Uh, one of the best attempts here to break this ultramarine force we reckon so far but we'll go on to the second turn now for the ultramarines it's difficult for them here at this stage but gilliman's very much alive and still in command i will see what he decides to do does he go in against the gene stealers here or does he wait again uh, until later on to strike we'll see we'll go on to the second turn now for the ultramarines so we'll let james make his moves here on his second turn Lone Primaris Marine moving in. Just about, I 
All right, he's trying to get his double range here. Okay, every shot counts here at this stage. Still, after all the damage we've done, there's still firepower available here. Twin laser cannon here. Uh, twin laser cannon with the other Razorback just over there. Ah, that's nice. That's a good spot for the banner, James. <laughs> it does look good. Are you going to commit with Gilliman? That's the question I think a lot of people are going to have. Not yet. Holding back with him. If we're going to destroy him. We're going to have to go after him here with these. Still a lot of creatures left. So, James thinking about what to do with the other units. Uh, fascinating here. I, I, I like this shooting bubble here for the Tyrians. This is a, an interesting combination. Uh, Gene Steelers have been good in previous games and they've continued to be good here as well. And yeah, it's just food for thought here. I, I thought I had a list drawn up uh, and this list was put together and it's starting to disrupt the whole plans here for the Tyrians. I like the theme of this list here. Carnifexes seem pretty good and maybe. Yeah, units like Tyranifex, Exocrines, they would do well in that bubble as well. So, plenty of options, but uh, Tyranny has definitely been uh, an army that Games Workshop have improved for sure. They did struggle in 7th edition, but now in 8th edition they seem to be able to take on uh, most opponents and do pretty good. And the shooting has been addressed as well. They're pretty fearsome. Uh, they can be with their firepower as well. James disembarking a squad here up to the barricade. He's committing them to the fight. This is getting kind of tense here. But if he can hurt the Tyranids here and knock the steam out of them and thin them down, then he can swing the game back in his favour again. And it's possible to do that. There is the firepower available uh, to make that happen. Right, so movement complete here. Uh, this squad has disembarked and moved out from the Razorback, moving to the edge there with uh, the Hellblaster banner on top. These uh, intercessor marines have moved to the edge to fire down as well. Squad has stayed inside the Razorback here. Predators have remained where he is. Gilliman has stood still, and that's for a reason. And then, have you pulled back out of combat with these two? Have you pulled back out of combat with this? No. Nope. You've stayed in combat. Oh, oh. Um... No, he, he, he was meant to pull out of combat, so we've let him just pull back there. So these have all removed themselves from play, uh, just like so. So we'll just put him there, just tuck him back so he's over an inch away. Alright, so there's no one in contact with the Gene Steelers just there. And that is about it. Alright, so we'll go on to shooting phase next for the Ultrains on this second turn. Okay, so orbital bombardment coming in. From Gilliman. From Gilliman who stood still. Okay, so you get it once per game. Three command points. It looks nasty. We'll resolve the damage of this one. Okay, so orbital bombardment resolved. You can see that one of the kind of is gone. The one with two wounds did take three mortal wounds. Uh, the point was just here. Rolled three inches. It kept those just out at the back. Uh, he, James missed the Tyranny Prime. He missed the Carnifex, he missed the Gene Stealers. He did hit this one and took it out. So that's one of the Carnifex is brought down. One of the one of the uh, heavy venom cannon kind of is so the Tyrians will miss him. There's just one of them remaining now, so their firepower has been reduced down uh, by a fair amount. So that's resolved. We'll press on with the rest of the shooting. Right, so he's played uh, Scions of Gilliman here, and that's from this melter firing against the kind of just over there. So re-rolls. They're going to shoot Gene Steelers. Fine. Okay, so we'll do the melter here. This is quite a important role. It's taken no wounds though, so uh, James won't be able to kill it, but he may well be able to cause some damage. Uh, so, 3 plus, and re-rolls. Re no. Oh yes, very good. It does get his hit. Freeze to wound. And stratagem on standby. Wounded. Does Even wound. Minus four. minus 4. So we do get a save of 6 plus, mm. which re-roll. <laughs> the agony of that all right that's thanks to the uh unpronounceable high fleet bonus for them 10 shots coming here from rapid fire bolters rerolls to hit because they are a tactical squad no what do you mean for the card you mean it's for the card yeah it's for the unit is it for the unit or for the target it's just basically then for the whole unit okay it's so it's the whole unit yes as they're a tactical okay. squad so re-roll that to them and you'll roll two again Oh, it's a miss. Right, okay. So he's got nine hits here, and then he'll be on fours to wound. These are not re rolls to wound. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Who needs it, though? Unbelievable dice roll. Uh, five plus. 
We've saved a couple, but we've lost five gene stealers brought down. J James has committed himself here with some of the infantry to try and bring these down. It's paid off though. Five gene stealers gone. Just there. That's knocked a chunk out of that unit. Right, we've got two laser cannons or twin laser cannons going to fire here at the Carnifex with the heavy venom cannon. It is worth trying to take him out. So, three plus. I'll have a double, double one. Double one. <gasps> um, no, that's it. I'm not going to spend a strategy to reload. Okay, so missed with that one. Quite a crucial result there. The other one's going to fire here, then freeze uh, against the same target. It's going to try and take him out. But he's in range of Gilliman, so he'll be on rerolls. Three plus. Oh, two results there. Uh, three plus to wound. Rerolls, thankfully. Good. Two wounds come through. It's minus three, so we have five pluses to try and block these. Which we block one of them, and James can roll up his damage. So it's d6. Just the one. Rerolling stratagem. Stratagem time. Okay, five so five, five plus to regain it. Yes. <laughs> he always rolls a six to regain, and the damage. He roll a one, three. a three. All right, not too bad. Three wounds come through. Okay, it's just within range of Killerman, but just out of double or rapid fire range. Here's just one shot here with the sergeant uh, for the hell blasters. So supercharging. Yep. Okay. So. Does get his hit. Three's to wound. Wounded. Okay, so six plus to save. Don't get six again. Might be able to. No, a one. All right, so that's two damage. All right, so two wounds. There's three wounds left uh, here on this Carnifex. So I, I think the Carnifex is going to survive here. James is shooting. It's just really down here. So we'll uh, re resolve the rest of the shooting here down against the Gene Steelers uh, with this squad and then... Oh, no, 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 you've pulled out a combat, but your ultra range you get to... Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, we'll resolve this shooting. All right, so, uh, shooting phase complete. Five gene stealers brought down. That's two flamers coming through. James allowed to fire uh, because of the ultra range doctrine after pulling out from combat. Uh, but rapid fire bolter from him fired as well. He wasn't allowed to throw grenades. Uh, these fired down... He threw a frag grenade. Frag grenade, yeah, that, that caused one casualty. Uh, and then the bolter did the no damage. Okay, so that's shooting phase finished. I think there's assaults. So we'll let James make his mind up about what he wants to do, whether he's going to commit Gilliman at this stage or not. We'll see. We'll go on to assaults next for the old trains on the second turn. Okay, fascinating events taking place. The tactical squad has charged and reached in against the Gene Steelers. And then here, Gilliman and the Primary Marines, which are above, they're ordered 10 for their charge, and they have made it in as well. So James is going to try and sweep away the Gene Steelers here as much as he can. We'll go on to combats next. James will get to go first with everything here uh, before the Gene Steelers can strike back. So eight attacks here in total. The Sergeant with the Chainsword uh, and the rest of the squad. So, freeze to hit, and then James will need force to wound, um, two. Now, I'm not sure if that was so wise, charging them, <laughs> so <laughs> failed with those two, he has brought two of the genius dealers down. Okay, so two casualties taken, a seven in total on them, uh, but they should be alright for morale, just being within uh, range there of their synapse creatures. Good. So, Gilliman fighting here, James gets to fight with him. I've got a feeling these gene cells will be destroyed, but we do have five plus in one, and with the five plus, uh, that's not really going to help with the catalyst, just with the damage that, that sword can do. So, f six attacks, Emperor's Sword, yeah. Uh, two's to hit. Rerolls. All hit. Ugh. Oh. Two's to wound. Any roll of six is d three mortal wounds per minute. Right. Okay. We roll the ones. There's one six. Okay. All wounded. All wounded. Okay. So we'll, we'll check the mortal wounds here. Uh, d three, because these do overflow from one model to the next. It's just the one. Okay. So it ignores the inbound save, but the five plus catalyst does not block it. So one gene stealer gone. And the others uh, is five saves of five plus. We, we need to block these, otherwise we're in trouble. Ooh, we block two. So the, it's three at a time. It's just three at a time, yeah. So this one, nope. This one, almost. And this one, no. Nope. We think we're doing this right here. We've just, just been checking the FAQ and so on. It's not a free gone. Okay, right, so there's two of them left. Yeah, so what we've done here is remove the models. James was then out of an inch to fight, but he then picks a unit to fight with. If you're within an inch, or if it's a unit that's charged, which is those, he's then piled in with them 
uh, afresh and now they can fight. So uh, that is five attacks actually. You might be able to finish these gene stealers off. There's two acid moors left there. Okay. They've all hit, wow. Uh, force to wound and re-rolls for Gilliman. Nice one, James. Yep. No, okay, it's a free saves. He could get them. Five pluses. Failed. Five pluses. He's done it. He's wiped them out. Mission accomplished. They'll not get to strike back against Gilliman. They're protecting their beloved Primark and finishing those gene stealers off. So, uh, gene stealers <laughs> being removed here. There's a whole heap of them. James! <laughs> just threw those into my dead pile. Look how, look how I've been looking after these and you just throw them onto the, <laughs> the pile, but they're gone. He hates them. All right, so... Yes, he can make a consolidation move now towards the nearest enemy models, which is just over here. Broodlord licks his lips. <laughs> prepares to move in. We've still got plenty of uh, showdown that still could go ahead across here. So that's combat's resolved except this one. We're going to strike now uh, with this unit against this uh, tactical squad. Okay, so acid more attacks. Uh, we don't get four attacks each now because there's less than ten in the unit. Two's to hit though. Loads of misses. Uh, loads of ones, but twos to hit because of the Broodlord, uh, his influence, he's just within. Uh, fours. It's a wound, just the three of them. Three saves a six plus, because they're AP minus three. Two. Two, okay, so two Marines brought down. Okay, so uh, two casualties so far, 15 attacks with the remaining uh, rending claws. Twos to hit, thanks to the Broodlord. And then force to wound. Sixes will be kills. So there's two kills. And then James will need to make uh, three saves here of four plus. Oh, he passes two. So three dead in total uh, there. So it has to be... That, well, he could let the sergeant absorb two and die and lose a marine and keep the melter alive. Or he could lose all the marines and keep the sergeant alive. Yeah, no, so he's removed them and kept the sergeant alive there. So he does remain alive. He's taken uh, five casualties there in total. So uh, combat's resolved there. We'll get uh, morale resolved now, and that'll mark the end of the turn. James is rolling up. Oh, he's rolled a one. Okay, fine. So the sergeant holds no problem at all. And you can remove our one, seven casualties. It's auto pass for synapse. And that's morale dealt with. So that marks the end of the second turn. So much has happened here. James still is really suffering. Uh, they've led the initial attack. They have caused damage, but they have been uh, decimated in return. Tyranids still have a lot of Carnifexes remaining alive and some HQs available as well. We'll see what they're able to do on their third turn coming up next. They're putting up a, a decent fight here, but Ultrarines are definitely still in the fight. There's no doubt about that. Right, so the vicious fight continues here for the Tyranids on their third turn. Pulling out from combat with the Gene Stillers, they've got a job to do over here. So they've moved out. They can't advance, but they've gone eight inches. Broodlord has uh, moved across, advancing with him. Uh, he's gone 11 inches across to join them. So that those working together, they'll need to take on uh, this Razorback just here. Then uh, the Carnifex is all moving, none of them advancing. And they're just keeping our HQs safe. So you've got the... Uh, Tyranny Prime just there, uh, Hive Tyrant there, just at the back. So that's the movement done. We're hoping our shooting can be effective enough to try and take out another Predator. That's the aim, at least, just to blast away. Just there. Now, we'll go on to Psychic Phase next for the Tyranids on their third turn. Alright, so Psychic Phase complete here. Uh, so, uh, Smite destroyed the Sergeant. Smite then a smite from here destroyed the sergeant. Smite from him then killed the last hellblaster. He's gone. He did get to fire. He did get a hit. Did get a wound. Um, he missed with one. Though. Missed with one. Yeah, but one did go through. So one wound remaining now if that kind of effects. Uh, Catalyst successfully went off as well uh, onto this gene stealer unit just here. Now, we used our last command point. That was to make smite go off. Yes, uh, we did. We rolled, re rolled one of the dice and it was a success. So, smites are pretty, it's pretty good just for eating away at the opponent's models. Okay. Yeah, no, it's really good. So, that's that complete. We're going to shooting phase next for the Tyranids on their third turn. All right, so perhaps the last round of shooting from the Heavy Venom Cannon. 
D3 shots, just the one. 3 plus. Does get a hit, strength 9, freeze to wound. Yes, right, so save here of 5 plus, uh, otherwise there'll be free damage coming through on the Predator. No, alright, so 3 damage. Then we'll fight this one here within 18 inches of these. D6 shots. Just the one. Need a 4 plus, which we miss. That's one kind of X fired. The next kind of X will fire. Uh, we'll just check the range, actually. James will check the range for us. Going to try and fire at the Predator. Yes. 18. Oh, miles in. Yeah, miles in. Okay. So D6 shots. Six shots, needing fours. Great shooting. Uh, we need force to wind. It's incredible dice roll. It's minus four. So that's four wounds. Oh, brilliant shooting there from that one. Right, so uh, D6 shots with the next one. Three, sh three shots. This is uh, the next kind of X along the last one with its acid spray. They all hit. Fours to wound. One wound comes through, so that's another wound caused, just three left. Getting close to killing this predator here. We'll have to switch to a Venom Cannon. I reckon it would be good to fire, so we'll fire the Venom Cannon. Oh, it's D3 shot, so that's just one shot. Does get a hit, does get a wound, and it's minus two, so uh, saves here of five plus. No, you're going to re-roll this one? It's D3 damage. We could kill you on a 5 or a 6. Okay. Damage, it is a 6. So the Predator is gone. James rolls a 6. No. Alright, so Predator destroyed. The last one has been removed. The so Tyranny Firepower is still pretty good, even though they've lost a number of their shooting units. So we have Strangle Fawn Cannons here. We're going to fire them through at the Razorback now. The Predator's gone. So D6 shots here. This can be from uh, this kind of X here. Two shots, threes to hit with these, and then uh, fours to wound. One save here, it's minus one, so four plus save. Saved, alright, so the next one, d6 shots, four shots, needing threes. Just the one, pretty poor shooting coming through here, and no damage. And the last one, this is from the Hive Tyrant, just gets two shots. As, no, it's at all terrible. What a contrast. Uh, but the Strangleform Cannons do no damage. They're quite good when the damage comes through. They're two uh, damage a time. But uh, we've fouled there with, with those. All right, so that is all of the shooting done. Uh, it's been pretty good from the uh, Tyranids here, causing trouble for the Ultramarines. Again, another Predator has been brought down. We'll go on to Assaults next to roll up some charges and some Overwatch. All right, so uh, charges have taken place here. Uh, this kind of effects here charged, or tried to, but failed. Then we charge with this one, it has made it in and took a wound as it charged. And then with no overwatch available, we may as well just charge this one in here. It's doomed anyway and gets to strike first, so charged in uh, this kind of effects here as well. So we'll roll up some combat resolution now, get this resolved. Okay, so we'll go first here. So this is a screamer killer, it gets four attacks. It's got uh, a pair of Monstrous Siphon Talons, so we get an extra attack, I'll reroll once, and we're on plus one to hit because we charged. And then uh, four plus to cause a mortal wound, which we do. So mortal wound, that's a marine gone. It's just the sergeant left. So uh, threes to hit. Rerolling ones. <laughs> Horrendous. Okay, so those have missed. And then uh, we'll roll up to wound. Yes, both the wounds come through. So James needs to roll up some saves here. It's AP minus three. It's two saves of six plus. No, nope, sergeant's easily killed. There's six wounds coming through against him. So target destroyed by them, uh, trampled underfoot by the Carnifexes. And that's the end of combat. So we're, we're not going to advance towards the uh, Gilliman here. <laughs> we'll hold where we are. If he wants to come and fight us, he'll have to move forwards himself. All right, so that marks the end of the third turn for the Tyrians. They're continuing to do well here, but the game is still far from over yet. James still has firepower available in the form of the two Razorbacks. That's nasty lads can uh, firepower available from them. And then also uh, Gilliman himself available to strike in close combat as well. So that marks the end of the third turn for the Tyranids. The game still hangs in the balance though for both sides. We'll go on to the third turn now for the Ultramarines.
Right, so movement done for the ultramarines here, remaining stationary with the Razorback. Gilliman has moved out boldly here, uh, <laughs> sweeping past two of the Carnifexes and heading into, right into the centre of the uh, enemy's uh, attack here. Fascinating stuff here from this Primarch. I'm not seeing anything like it really on the channel. It's so bold, it just take on anybody. It doesn't care. Just fearless. He's a level above everybody. Well, he is. Uh, no fear. He knows no fear. He's the, he's the pure embodiment here. Of the Empress. Oh dear. Okay, so yeah, he's just he's just a level above everything. But it's, it's great to have him in the game. It's a real challenge here. It's been enjoyable trying to take him on. Uh, but still, he's unwounded here. But his army. Uh, falling apart all around him here at the, at the moment. Uh, so combat squad has disembarked from the Razorback here and the two tech marines have moved out as well to try and deal with these Carnifexes. The banner has shifted forwards as well. So it's charge and counter charge taking place here. The Ultramarines are happy to move in, try and take the Tyranids on. I reckon the Ultramarines could hurt the Tyranids here on this turn. It should be a, might be able to swing the game round and dispatch yet another foe. We'll see. We'll go on to shooting phase next. Right, so shooting resolved. Uh, Laz cannon fire coming through from here and from here, uh, and then Gilliman himself firing through. A couple of uh, extreme saves here on sixes and fives uh, has kept him alive. He's just on two wounds remaining, but that uh, kind of affects in deep trouble. And then that uh, kind of affects his hit are gone. That was firepower from the tech marines and the tactical squad just there getting some good results. Remember, it's just one wound remaining there, which James picked up. And that is uh, here. Stormbolter took out one of the Gene Steelers uh, from this squad. That is shooting phase complete. We'll see what James decides to do now with Robert Gilliman. No doubt he will charge, but we'll see who he decides to go after. Coming up next. All right, so no, we've measured it very, very carefully here. In with a plus one. Yeah, in with a plus one. He's a fraction of an inch out. We're both in agreement here. He has fallen short of trying to reach this kind of fix. So he wanted to charge both. We do have some overwatch to resolve, actually. We'll see if we can pick up some wounds. I doubt it, but uh, there's a chance to do some damage there. But that'll mark the end of the turn. There's nothing else to charge with. And all of these units now freed up to move, shoot, and potentially charge. We could gang up against this guy and... We'll get at least one combat done before you interrupt play and strike back with Gilliman. So this game is far from over yet, but there's a chance here. The first chance, really, in the three games that we've played with Gilliman uh, for him to be in some kind of trouble. And he doesn't have much support left. There's, this is what's left here. It does have the two Razorbacks, though. They're pretty helpful. So what we'll do is we will end the turn, unless he wants to charge with something else. He will, right, okay, so we'll just, we'll let James think about this, we'll resolve this overwatch first of all. You're right, so uh, charge has taken place here, and a wound has been taken, that tech marine's made it in, and the other one uh, tried to charge but fouled, so he did take a wound from overwatch just there. So we'll go on to combats now, there is a combat to resolve, so James you can roll up your dice to see what kind of damage you do. You'll get to fight first, here, before the kind of X tries to strike back, he is on eight wounds. Doing the servo harness. Yep, one attack. Rerolls. For Gilliman. Plus one. Okay, yeah, four plus. No. Failed. Oh dear, risk he took. And any other kind of attacks? Uh, chainsaws, that's three attacks. Three attacks. Rerolls. All hit. And fives to wound. Yep. Uh, two saves. Rerolls. Right, two saves. Okay, so two saves. And we failed one, so uh, wound taken. Okay, so uh, striking back with the Carnifex here, five attacks for the two monstrous Cyber and Tannins, need fours and re rolling ones. Three hits. See if we wound, they all wound. It's minus three, so three saves of five plus. Oh, oh unbelievable. Two sixes and a five. Well done. Oh. <laughs> he holds the Carnifex up in combat. Heroic yeah. stuff here. Glimmer slips on the snow and ice. But uh, Tech Marine, despite his huge servo harness, has charged further than Gilliman <laughs> could charge and has held up one of the Carnifexes. Heroic stuff. Seeing the Primark in trouble, a Tech Marine has sacrificed himself here uh, to try and take on uh, one of the Carnifexes. That marks the end of the turn there for the Ultramarines. That's their third turn complete for them. So we're going to the fourth turn now for the Tyrians as we push into the later stages of the game. It's been an epic fight. It truly has been epic. A memorable game. Yeah, very, very tense. So James is tired out. I'm tired out here. Uh, both armies look tired as well. The only fresh... Well, everyone should gather around him 
in a snowy cold day look at his sword he could keep warm from that and his his two uh, burning tapers there that can keep everyone warm as well but we'll go on to the fourth turn now for the Tyranids they're still in this fight uh, they have done uh, better than anyone else that's faced Gilliman before on the channel we'll press on see what kind of impact they can make now in their fourth turn coming up next All right, so moving for the Tyranids here, uh, Broodlord moving through, nine inches in total with him. And then the Genius Steelers rolled up a six for their advanced move, so they've moved right along to here. Going to try and take out this Razorback, uh, just to try and silence the firepower from this thing, and then to stop it from moving off onto objectives later on as well. Uh, moving along to take on Gilliman here, two Carnifexes, and then uh, they've parted either side to let the Hive Tyrant move through as well. Shooting available from all of these. Uh, the Trigon Prime is just going to hold back there uh, just to shoot, potentially charge into the Tech Marine. And then across here the Carnifex, uh, happy to carry on in the fight. And then this Carnifex moving up 7 to shoot and to charge as well. So that's movement done. On to shooting at no Psychic phase next for the Tyranids on turn four. Alright, so at Psychic phase here, we wish we'd captured this on camera. It's... It's one of the mo it's a maxed out psychic phase. Potentially, we could see a hundred percent efficiency with what's just occurred. I, I I'm can't, not surprised. I can't. can't believe what's just happened. So, psychic scream cast here. It went off, and three mortal wounds caused on the Razorback. That was a good start. Then we rolled psychic scream. It went off. We scored eleven with the hive tyrant, and then rolled a six for the D six mortal wounds coming through against Gilliman. So he's taken six wounds. There's nothing he could do to stop it. Uh, psychic Scream uh, and uh, Smite, powers like that, uh, is the weakness here. It's got through and it has hurt him here severely. Three wounds remain. We've then rolled up for Psychic Scream, uh, the psychic power that we have. That has gone off on an eight and it's D3 mortal wounds. That means on a five or a six, Gilliman will be slain. Or will he? Or, or will he? Five or a six, unbelievable. No, it's not. I have no command points left. <laughs> I should have saved one. All right, but another wound's been taken. Gilliman's been reduced to two wounds. This, it, what, what a result here. Oh. I should have. For those who've tuned out saying, oh, I know what the conclusion will be. The moment I saw Gilliman, I switched off. I, you, you can't, uh, you can't write them <laughs> off here. I'm going to do multiple command points to... Hit again. Yeah, no, if James had a charge, it would have been uh, devastating. He had uh, cards lined up to be able to fight, fight again. and fight again. Right, okay, and slay multiple. Right, okay, that would have been horrendous. Yeah. But he didn't. He fouled with the charge, and then the Tyranids have got their chance to strike. Uh, and they've done that by using Smite here. Gilliman is in terrible trouble now at this point, and we'll go on to the shooting phase next. And look, he's the closest model now uh, for multiple Tyranid units. So we could really bring him down before even getting a chance to fight in combat. But at what stage do you resurrect? At the end of at the end of the phase, at the nearest point. So you could resurrect, and then we charge you. Uh, we'll check. We'll need to check these rules here. Got to get this right. But we'll we'll go on to shooting phase next. Yeah, it's the end of the phase, we've just checked, so if we slay him with firepower, and then he resurrects, if he does, then we could then charge him, and then he only gets it once, it's the first time he's reduced to zero wounds, it means that he can only do it once, uh, the resurrection, it's not constant over and over, it's not a Commissar Yarrick style character, um, so yeah, we, we are... We're at a point where we could take Gilliman out. We'll go on to shooting phase next. I think we'll need to film this one. And I have total regrets here not, not filming that psychic phase, but uh, don't usually, but we should have done that time around. Okay, so Strangleform Cannon. Two shots. Threes to hit. They both hit Gilliman. There's a wound. Okay, so he's got a command point on standby. It's minus one, so you're three plus in one save. No, oh, he's passed. All right, okay. I think he's going to pass quite a few of these. Uh, the Hive Tyrant will fire. Yes, may as well. Okay, so D6 shots. Just the one. Poor dice rolling here. And no hit. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. And uh, no stratagems there. They've all been uh, used up. So that is two of the Strangleform Cannons used already. So... We'll just hold here. I need to get some shooting resolved against it. I want to reduce these down. So I'm going to let him fire across at the Marines. Three shots. Uh, these are fours to hit. Nothing. 
Tyrannus. All of a sudden, the Tyrannus' bioweapons are frozen over here in the cold weather. Uh, this guy will fire his weapon through against the Razorback. So D3 shots, just the one. Freeze for a hit. Failed again with him. So uh, sh the uh, shooting, not uh, very effective here at all. So uh, strangle form cannon here then uh, to fire across to here. D6 shots. One shot. Unbelievable. Does get his hit. Strength. Does strength 7. Toughness 6. Does get his wound. Free up save. Stratagem on standby. He's yeah. fouled. He's rolled a 1. Oh no. <laughs> one or two. So damage, damage 2. You will die. So stratagem? Yeah. 5 plus to recover. No. I'm going to do a save first. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's rolled a one. And now try and recover the stratagem. I'll laugh my head off if you roll a Oh no, he rolls a four. Alright, James. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Did you use a stratagem? Yes. Well that means He's slain. Yeah, that means you've got to roll your four plus to get back up yeah, now. Phase. Yeah, with no reroll. Oh, hold on. We'll have to have a little chat about this. Yeah. It's the end uh, there of the is phase. it's the end of the phase, isn't it? Yeah. Which is this? It's the shooting phase. Yeah. So you, but <laughs> oh, no. before he's slain, yes. To shoot. I, I don't mind. No, you can shoot as much as you want <laughs> if you die. Um, okay, we're just going to we're going to check the rules here to make sure we've got this right because this is channel history <laughs> at the moment, James. Oh dear, dear, dear. All right. Right. Yeah. So we we'll let James. He has died. Here. Well, not yet. No, he's gone down. He's he's gone down. Technically, yeah. Um, hold on a second. See what the banner rules say. Yeah, so check the rules. Uh, it's for infantry units, and uh, Gilliman is not an infantry. So he is a monster. monster so he doesn't get it. All right. So we're just going to have to ask you to make. The armor of Fate. The Armor of Fate. What an appropriate name. Four plus, please. You have to roll the dice, James. He's rolling it quick. Six! <laughs> he's rolled for six. <gasps> I just want to get it out of my head. Oh dear. So he's died once and then resurrected. He's back with D6 wounds, please. It's a second chance. I'm going to charge you so badly in combat. <laughs> so uh, D6 wounds recovered. Four. Four. Oh, respectable enough. So re resurrect him back up and he comes back with four wounds. This is the final stand of, uh, for Gilliman though. So he's knocked down and out, but he's different to everybody else. He pulls himself back up to fight again. Uh, but if he goes down again, he will not get back up and we'll claim that head. So that is shooting resolve. We're going to assaults now. Lots of assaults here for the Tyrion to resolve some overwatch and charge distances next. Okay, so charges have taken place. Uh, the uh, Tyranny Prime has made into combat there against the Tech Marine, and then we, we, we need to gang up here, so Carnifex, uh, the Hive Tyrant charge first, took no damage on Overwatch, he's gone in, uh, then he's charged and he's charged, so three of them gang up against Gilliman himself. Uh, one Gene Steel lost, they charged in, took damage, and then the Broodlords made it in after they reached there in combat, and across here, the Screamer Killer has made contact. And Heroic Intervention, well done James. So everything's in combat now, on the board, except this Razorback just here. So we'll get on to combat resolution next. Critical point here. The game will be decided, I reckon, after this phase. We'll see. All right, so uh, Broodlord fighting here. Two's to hit. They've all hit. It's fives to wound. Sixes are really good. Nothing. He's not quite so good against vehicles. And even fives there, so no result from him. Be down to the Gene Steelers. Oh, ouch. Yes, didn't think of that. Not five plus is to regain. What well on James? Gilliman's trying to... <laughs> well, I'll concentrating on this combat. Uh, Gilliman's trying to keep himself alive here. So, uh, Gilliman will interrupt play. Unbelievable. S hold it right there. This could go against the Tyranids here. Okay, so James will interrupt play here. Just need to remember about the Thornbacks here. These two, four pluses for mortal wounds to come through. Yes, we've caused two mortal wounds. That, that's at the end of the charge phase, so knock that down there to two wounds remaining. They've caused damage there. Gilliman now, his life hangs in the balance with two wounds remaining. All right. Uh, this one, uh, four plus. Yes, as well. So there's a mortal wound taken on the uh, squad just there. 
Yeah, so that's uh, uh, one of the Marines brought down. So uh, you're interrupting play, James. Who are you going to try and fight against? The Hive Tyrant? Hive Tyrant. Oh. Over. oh, dear. There's a real showdown here between these two. Fascinating. Okay, so six attacks. Yep. Two's to hit. James is happy to go ahead with this combat here. Rerolling those two. He's bound to get... A oh, one has failed. Five hits. Strength eight. I'm using the Empress Sword. Okay. Uh, freeze to end. Rerolls. Yeah. Any roll of six is D3 additional mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so D3 additional mortal wounds. Right, okay. So just hold it right there. Um, that's additional. So these have all wounded. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't block that, so... Uh, but I'll need to try and block the... Anyway, with 4 plus in one. But just do the D3 extra mortal wounds. One, so one wound taken. So we'll just add that on now. Okay, she's going to use a reroll here to try and improve that. Yes, yes, by one. Okay, so two mortal wounds coming through. Okay, so ten wounds left. I'm going to try and make some four up invun saves here for these regular attacks coming through. Okay, he's just rolled a five. He's regained his stress. All right, so four pluses. If we block all these, we'll be. Yeah, no. Okay, so that's a load of damage coming for us. Twelve damage coming through. Yeah, that's twelve damage. <coughs> That's the hive tyrant dead. But you get to immediately fight, fight back. back. Lash, whip, and bone sword. These two can cancel each other out. What an unbelievable finish. This doesn't happen often in games. Right, so we'll check the rules here for monstrous lash, whip, and bone sword. Okay, so we're trying to do this correct according to the rules. We have to lay him down, and then when it comes round to my chance to fight, he gets to uh, attack before he's removed from play. Uh, we will roll to see if we get a six here. We do. This is death throws here. <laughs> there could be trouble here for these gun effects. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hang on there a second. This is, <laughs> this is weird. Because it, I'm worried about my gun effects, but Gilliman could be slain by this. As he dies, uh, he could bring Gilliman down with him. But then I'm just going to play this stratagem. Which is. Only in death does duty end. Oh, <laughs> it's down. like a stop. Oh, D will go down. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, I mean, I've learned a lesson here. Always keep a. No, no, no. I'm not going to complain. I'm glad that six was rolled, because it can kill... I know. Get him. Right. Him. Okay. What, what a stuff. weird turn of events here towards the end of this game. Okay, yeah, we're just checking the sequence here. It's when this model is reduced to zero wounds, which is yeah, right at... Well. It, yeah, it's right at this very point. So uh, we'll roll this up now. So D3 mortal wounds on this card effects. Just the one. Whew, that's a good result. So that keeps that one alive. D3 on the other one. Two mortal wounds... On him, so he drops down to six mortal wounds, or six wounds left. And then now, uh, a three plus to kill Gilliman. No stratagems. No stratagems. It's a simple power armor save. Four. Gilliman is dead. But before he, di but before he dies, only in death does duty end. So, uh, use his stratagem when Adeptus Astartes' character is slain. That model summons the strength for one final attack, and can immediately either shoot... Or fight as if it was your fight phase. So he's going to fight again. Spend the he's down. And who are you going to fight against? Or you can split your attacks between... You can kill both of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a way to end. So you can do three attacks or, or, or two attacks against him to make sure he dies and the rest against him. Uh, the Hand of Dominion is strength 12, goes toughness 7. Okay. So even if I use that, I'll still use the Emperor's Sword. I've got yeah, the sword. Okay. <laughs> so... What do you reckon? Uh, two, uh, two. two on that, f four on that. Oh, okay. Right, so two attacks against him. Yeah. This is incredible. He could slay both these Carnifexes. The effort that's required to bring a Primarch down, would you believe? Here we go. One Three hit. Rolls to hit. Three rolls, yes. Because of the Primarch. He hits. And. Freeze to wind. Freeze to kill. Freeze to kill. Three rolls. Three minus four. Yep. And three damage. And re-rolls to wound. Oh, we found both of those, but you've yes, passed with double six. So we die. Uh, minus four. Yeah, Empress Blade. Uh, yes, he's dead. Uh, death throws. No, the car fixes don't get it. Oh, no, they don't do it. Okay, yes, they don't. They're not big enough. All right, so he's, so he's gone. What a way to finish. Yes, and now this one. Four attacks. Two's to hit. Reroll that one. Still missed. Three hits. We could survive maybe the six wounds here. Fouled with two. 
He needs to get these. Yeah. He's found. Okay, yeah, so nine damage. He dies. So remove. Um, no. So remove him from play. Yep. Unbelievable. The stratagem cards. I've never seen such a powerful display of stratagems being used. But James, <laughs> James is removing Gilliman from play. Uh, excuse me. Can you bring him back, please? Uh, you need to leave something behind. It can't come off. No, it does. I'm just, I've seen it come off before. Thank you very much. There well, it is. get it because he's dead. No, no, I've slain Gilliman. So uh, that's one head taken. If you want it back, you'll have to win a victory against another army. But I have taken one of Gilliman's heads. You'll have to fight bareheaded next time. Uh, <laughs> so, and if you look... Uh, he's gone. So everyone's dying here. Everything's dying towards the end. I I've never seen a finish like this. Bloodstones. It's unbelievable. Let's take all the wound stacks away. And it's just a... Uh, site where a memorial will be raised one day. Uh, <laughs> so to come in right. Crazy. What a, what a way to go. So we'll mark the spot here. This is where Gilliman died. <laughs> we can, ultramarines from all over the galaxy can come to this place and hold a minute's silence for the, the place where Gilliman fell and lost his head to the Tyranid force. But well done to the Tyranids here. Unblue, I never thought it would see it happen, but it has occurred in this game. Just to resolve the rest of the combats uh, here with the Carnifex fighting, this Carnifex fighting as well. So uh, we'll do this combat here. Uh, five attacks with the Screamer Killer. Reroaring ones, which we've got a triple one. Fouled, it's just the two come through. They both wounds, two saves of six plus. Otherwise, two marines will be brought down. Make it to fight back on three plus because of the banner. Banner. Oh yeah, the banner's just here. By the way, it's just there. I think it should be a two plus because they saw their prime not die. Oh yes, and no, they've, they've witnessed horrifying events taking place here. Yeah, and uh, not so. Do. Okay, <laughs> so. Oh, this is uh, fighting back. Yep. Yeah. So just a single attack. So three is to hit. Uh, no reroll ones because Gilliman. It's gone. gone. Okay, and then. Uh, Fives to wind, nothing. Okay. Okay, so the prime's going to fight here. Four attacks need twos. They've all hit. Freeze to wound. Three wounds, all at minus one, so three up saves. No two wounds. Down to one wound left. So that's all the charges uh, have fought there, so uh, I'll in we'll go to. I uh, choose a combat which will be that kind of fix over there. So, uh, Screamer Killer. Five attacks, needing uh, fours. Twos, yep, two saves of uh, six plus or five plus. No, it's here, so uh, he's gone. Yeah. Three damage each, so the tech marine's destroyed. Oh, so uh, they've consolidated uh, towards the nearest enemy models just over there, closing in for the kill. So uh, that's their consolidation move done. Uh, they've headed off in this direction. James can fight back now. This is an intervention here, isn't it? Yep, so yeah, so James can fight back with all of these models here. Okay, so uh, James rolling up his attacks here with the regular Marines. Fives to wound. One. Save of uh, three plus. Passed. Tech Marine now, the servo arm, four plus. Okay, so the arm's gonna fight. He does get his hit. Well done. It's times two. Strength eight. Freeze to wind. Two. Freeze to wind. Wounded. Wounded and not saved. Free damage. Free damage. Okay, so uh, this is a fresh kind of effects that one. So it's down uh, to five wounds remaining. Uh, two attacks to the power axe now. Freeze. Both hit. Wow. Strength five. AP minus two. So uh, five to wind. No, okay, that's it. All the rerolls have disappeared now that Gilliman's gone. Uh, so that marks the end of combats and the end of the turn. So we'll go on now onto the. F oh, you can attack back here with him. Sixes. So sixes. Gets a hit. Doesn't wound. Okay, so that is it. That's the end of combats and the end of the turn. We'll go on to the fourth turn now for the Ultramarines. James will still fight. He's got still got firepower available here. He's got some units left just there. The banner's still alive. So James could play for pride here and try and win the game. 
Uh, but the Tyranids have tipped the game in their favour. They've still got some nasty units still alive, but it's not over yet. We'll go on to the fourth turn of the Ultramarines next. Okay, so James moving here. The game's not over yet. Victory is still definitely possible for the Ultramarines. He's pulled out of combat here and uh, let off smoke with this Razorback. And then here... If we lose these Carnifexes, James is free to move off with multiple units to try and seize objectives. And he's got the manpower to do it. He's still got these alive. He still has a Razorback alive as well. So, and, and stratagems on standby. Okay, yeah, so that's movement done. Uh, James pulled back. Now remember, uh, with his Ultramarines Doctrine, he can shoot there with the Melter Gun. And also with him as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, not bad. Right, so we'll go on to shooting phase next for the Ultramarines. A, a critical point here in the game. So twin laser cannon is going to go into this kind of effects just here, and the storm bolter as well, into that one, right. So twin laser cannon, didn't freeze to hit, no re-rolls available. Let's hit stratagem. with one, oh he's going to use a stratagem. I can't regain the stratagem because the warlord's slain. Right, okay, so uh, free, pl yes. free plus. Two. Does get his hit, well done James, okay, freeze to wound. Both wounded. Oh, both Eight wounded. Points. Yeah, so he didn't charge, so five pluses to try and say we save one on a six, so it's d6 damage. He'll not kill it here, just uh, with seven wounds remaining, but he does score five wounds coming through, so two wounds left here on this Screamer Killer. So uh, Storm Bolter going into this one, four shots, then freeze. They'll hit, fives to wound. No. Nothing. Okay. So uh, Tech Marine's now going to supercharge his plasma. Yep, into the Carnifex. One shot. If I roll one, he's slain. Oh, and no rerolls. Okay, here it comes. Five. Sort of five, he's got his hit. Freeze to wound. Oh, oh he's rolled a one. No. Oh, it's hurting now. No rerolls available. It really hurts. <laughs> the damage not coming through as efficiently as before. Uh, anything else? So, uh, Scions, Sons, Scions of Gilliman. Sons of Gilliman. Okay, that's uh, stratagem being used, rerolls to hit. So he's going to fire the Melter across to there, and a Crack Grenade and Bolters across to there. So, uh, Melter first of all then, 3 plus. Gets his hit, freeze to wound. AP minus 4. No! No, he's rolled a 1. Oh, dear. You can feel it slipping away from James here. He needs to bring these down because one round from them would be enough to cause trouble, I think, for these remaining Ultramarines. Uh, a crack grenade across against this one. Three plus. Re rolls. That's uh, uh, cocked dice, yeah. Hit. Gets his hit. Uh, fours to wound. Strength six, toughness six. Yeah. Toughness seven. Yeah, fouls. Fouls to wound. Strength six. Crack grenade. Uh, then bolter rounds coming through, uh, which is four shots. Three is because of the squad, yeah. All hit. Desperate fighting here from the Ultrans as they try to cling on to achieve victory. Just the one wound coming through and a three plus save, which we pass it as a three. Okay. So now uh, a crack grenade coming across from the company ancient. Company ancient. Three plus. No, and that's it. Right, so that's the end of the shooting phase. We'll go on to charges now. We'll see if James wants to go ahead with any charges here, possibly, and resolve some Overwatch as well. Yeah, so charge has taken place. James has taken a wound on Overwatch, and the Ancient has charged in with the banner against the Carnifex. So we'll get this combat resolved, see what kind of damage James can do with his power sword. It's desperate fighting here, so... Freeze. Freeze to hit. So all your stratagems are gone. All of them gone now. Oh, dear me, this is the... This is right to the bitter end here. Uh, fives to wound. Does get a wound. Six up to save. The power sword. You save it. <laughs> Roll a six. Okay, so uh, fighting back here with five attacks. Needing fours. Twos. Uh, three saves of six plus. If he fouls any of these, he's destroyed no so plus he has to fight again oh right the banner himself yeah. does get to fight one attack this is it does get his hit doesn't get his wound and he has gone uh so that marks the end of combat so we didn't go uh move forwards and consolidate in we're happy to hold back there and just shoot and then potentially charge as well and that marks the end of the turn so end of turn four we're going to the fifth 
Uh, probably final turn of the game now uh, for the Tyranids. They just need to try and mop up what's left of this Ultramarine resistance. Right, so movement done for the Tyranids here. Uh, moving in to try and take on the Razorback with the uh, Genius Stealers and the Broodlord. And across here, uh, the Tyranid Prime and the Carnifex with two wounds remaining moving in to take on these. And then across here, this Carnifex moving across to try and take out the Razorback. That is all of the movement done. We'll go on to Psychic Phase. Yes, okay. So we'll roll up for Smite which goes off, D3 mortal wounds, there's two more mortal wounds come through, knocking him down to five, that really is helpful. Yes, James has knocked down a bracket just there. Uh, that psychic phase finished, there's nothing else to do, so we'll go on to shooting phase next. So shooting phase, going to fire back this way uh, with the acid screamer attacks, that's D6 shots, two, then fours, do get one hit, does wound, it's minus four, so one of the marines is gone. And then we'll fire d6 with the other Carnifex. Three shots, needing fours, just the one hit. We do get the wound, another marine gone as well uh, to remove from play. He wants to keep the melter alive. We'll fire the prime at him to try and kill that melter. Yes, I reckon. We should, yes, so we'll go for uh, D3. Two shots. This is the Venom Cannon. Do get a hit. We do get a wound. It's minus two. Oh, James saves on a six. Good dice roll there. And I reckon that's pretty much all the shooting resolved. So uh, just some casualties coming in there against uh, the Tactical Marines. And that's about it. Right, so we'll go on to uh, Charges next and Overwatch. Right, so charges have taken place, Broodlord's made it in. Uh, we did lose from Stormbolt to fire, two of the Gene Steelers have gone. Uh, laser Cannon as well, okay, so uh, damage coming through from there. Uh, they charged first, by the way, and that paved the way for the Broodlord to charge in. Uh, then down here, uh, we charged the Prime in first, he's made it into combat, and then the Carnifex has contacted both. Uh, James causing a wound, but we passed a save there with a Flamer hit. And then here, no damage taken at all. This kind of effects charging in against the Razorbacks. So we'll resolve these combats here next. So Acid Moors fighting here. Uh, there's the four of them remain. Need twos. And then fives and sixes will be good. There's two. So two saves of six plus. Save one. All right, so we knock that down to four wounds remaining. I'm not sure if we're going to destroy him. Uh, three attacks of a regular... Uh, yep, and then that's minus four, so that's a wound that comes straight through. So down to three remaining. Uh, the Broodlord, six attacks, needing twos, all of them except one, and then fives or sixes. Oh, dear. oh he's gone. It's, yeah, straight, that's horrendous. <laughs> so he's cut that vehicle down uh, very badly indeed. Minus six or something? Yeah, no, he's, he's hacked that to pieces. So uh, D6 to see if it explodes. No, no. all right, so Razorback destroyed. Okay, so mission accomplished for them, and they've consolidated in this direction. So Razorback gone. We can focus our attention now on what's left down here. So we'll take out the, oh, we'll try and take on the other Razorback here. So four plus for a mortal wound. Yes, uh, so it's a mortal wound caused. Still got nine wounds to try and get through here. Uh, freeze to hit with this one. Rerolling ones. They all hit. Yeah, so we are strength six. James is toughness seven. So fives or sixes to cause trouble. And just the one comes through. So six plus to save. No, so free damage comes through against the Razorback. So James will not be wiped out this turn. The Razorback will survive just there. So fighting here with this Screamer Killer, charge, so it gets five attacks in freeze to hit. Uh, now. So we'll do Living Battering Ram first of all, four plus. Yes, we'll put that on the Marine, so he can be removed from play. He's gone. So that's the end of the charge phase. We'll, we'll now uh, consolidate in here with the Tyranny Prime uh, and fight with him. Need twos. And then two wounds come through from these rending claws. Uh, it's forced to save. 
two plus. A two plus, yeah. So uh, minus one. So yeah, one wound does come through against the tech brain. Some wounds remaining. Uh, we'll now fight against him with the uh, charging kind effects. Yep, three hits. Three to wound. They've all wounded, and they're minus three. So three saves of five plus. If he fails any of these, the tech priest is gone. No, all right, so he can be removed as well. James can fight back here uh, with the Razorback, three attacks. Oh, no, it's D3 because the damage bracket. One attack doesn't hit, and that's it. And we reckon, oh, James has said that that will concede. That will concede, and he's going to concede. All right, and because he can't shoot here, he's been locked down in combat. He can pull away or just be chased, uh, shot up, and charged. So he can end the game with at least a vehicle on the board. But a result we were not expecting here. Oh, Tyranny. Yeah, Gilliman's charge, he could have silenced a number of the monstrous creatures, it would have made a massive difference, but he slipped up there on the ice, and the Tyranny's got to shoot and strike back there in combat, it made all the difference, Gilliman was slain uh, in fantastic style uh, there by the Tyranid units, ganging up in the end. So, uh, we'll not calculate victory points here. No one's on any of the objectives, really. Well, we're claiming this one. Uh, Warlord's been slain for both sides. Linebreaker scored here by the Tyranids. So that's 4-1. Uh, first blood oh, was the Tyranids. 5-1. Yeah, 5-1 the final score. Okay. But uh, that's uh, a victory then to the Tyranids. But uh, a fantastic lineup here. Nice backdrop for this one. Love fighting across the snow. It's always a, a favourite of ours to play. And then the matchup itself, Tyranid's Ultramarine is always a classic. And good to have the Tyranid Codex available to match up against the Space Marines. It made it fairer, and they are, have improved significantly. The firepower is a lot better, more reliable, damage is more significant. And then uh, in combat, they managed to make a success of that as well. But the game could have easily gone the other way. It was difficult to call the way through, so it's been a classic fight here to the bitter end. But Gilliman uh, has been slain in this game. Didn't see that one coming, uh, but that is typical Warhammer 40,000. But uh, we've enjoyed this one very much. Hope you've enjoyed it too. Keep a look out for future battle reports on the channel. Great game. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time. Okay, so units of the game. James is going to give it to Gilliman. He, he, he is amazing. He really is good and fought well, uh, but he Just was brought hero. down. He was a hero, yeah. And then uh, for the Tyranids, the Carnifexes did particularly well, especially the Carnifexes armed with the heavy Venom cannons, pretty nasty firepower available from them. So perhaps a, a, a bubble or a core of shooting Tyranids uh, seems to work pretty good, and then using them later on in combat as well. Uh, pretty effective, but that's units of the game for both sides.